game. Coach RV and Coach CB. Area code 459. What up, Area Code 459? It's your boy, Coach B. I'm here with my co host, Coach CB. What's up, CB? What's up, Coach? How you doing? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed, man. I got a special guest in the house. Before we get to the guest, let's thank some people. I want to give a shout out to In House Inc. for the awesome logo that they've created behind us. Also, want to give a shout out to J Make Crafts for all of the awesome household items that she makes and also our t shirts that she's hooked us up with. Also, want to thank our guy, George, George Frost, for getting our logo on all your favorite Nike Jordan apparel if you want some of that make sure you click the link below and can't forget our friends and our family they've done an awesome job supporting us we couldn't have done this without them and then most importantly god for giving us a vision for how to shape area code 459 man we got a special guest in the house for another topic tuesday it's my boy um uh, oliver crawford man we're talking about knowledge is power today so let me go ahead and introduce our guest i'm a huge proponent uh, of education and so is this guy uh, a very curious learner. I've often been uh, told that this man just is just uh, on, on top of the game. Um, he's our guest. Uh, he, he's from Valparaiso, Indiana. He got his bachelor's degree from West Virginia University. He got his Juris Doctorate degree from Faulkner University, Jones School of Law in Montgomery, Alabama. He currently practices criminal justice and law in Pensacola, Florida. It's my guy, Oliver Crawford III Esquire. What up, though? What up, hey man, how are you? Thanks for having me. Man, no doubt, man. We've been trying to get you back since the first mini series that we had on that first Top of Tuesday. We talked about stepping outside your comfort zone. It's good to know that we had 35 episodes and counting. So you're coming right back after 34 good episodes, and we're happy to have you back. Caitlin, go ahead and introduce the episode. Well, as you said earlier, today we're going to talk about how knowledge is power. And you know, I'm a huge proponent of education. All of y'all are a huge proponent of education. I'm a very curious learner, and I have often been told that I've, I have too much information in my head sometimes, but this <laughs> passion that I have for education is something that I try to instill in every young kid that I have the opportunity to influence. When I used to work at the community center, I had a second grader that was repeating the grade, and one day he sat me down, and he, he started talking to me, and he started spitting out all these answers to the math problems that we had on the wall. He started telling me all of his coins. He started telling me everything that he had been struggling with the year before and showing me how he had learned it and had grasped the information. And so I, I looked him in the eye and I told him, I said, I want you to know that nobody can take away your education. And he was confused. And so I, I explained a little bit further and I said, can, can somebody steal your money? He said, yes. I said, can your house burn down and you lose everything inside of it? He said, yes. I was like, can your family member die? He, he said, yes. And I said, so somebody could take away your family. Somebody could take away all the stuff that you have. Somebody could take away all your money. I said, but can somebody tell you that two plus two doesn't equal four? And he was like, no. I was like, exactly. So nobody can ever take away your education. And so to me, when we talk about knowledge is power, like that is the pure definition of why knowledge is power, because it's something that nobody can ever take away from you. And so saying all that, Oliver, what does the saying knowledge is power mean to you? For me, um, it's taken me everywhere that I've really wanted to go. I've, um, I'm from the Midwest, as you guys, uh, as my friend, Mr. Britt and Coach Britt articulately stated earlier on. Um, I was able to go from there to West Virginia University and then um, also to Faulkner, which took me to the south. And uh, now I'm in Florida. Um, for me, there's, there's, as you said, um, I can't disagree with that. It pretty much can take you, you could, you can basically take your, you can write your ticket like that. Um, one of my favorite athletes of, of all time is Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman is from Oakland. Or no, he's from Compton, California. Not too many guys make it out of Compton, California. It's pretty damn dangerous said, nah, Compton. And he was able to go to Stanford. Everybody always doubted how smart he was, but they couldn't take away two plus two equals four. They couldn't take away the, his ability to excel, not only on the field, but in the classroom. And you always, uh, my dad always told me, you know, you can always play sports and that's all fun and great and that, all that stuff. And I always encourage people to do that because that just, you know, shows you all kinds of different 
abilities and skills and all kinds of people skills that you can't you can't really duplicate in a lot of different realms. But if you can have, if you can do hold your own in the school and you can do well in grades consistently and you always show up on those test days and you do your thing, sky's the limit. So I just I guess knowledge is power to me because it, it's it's been a vehicle that's always been there for me. Man, I'm glad that you talked about the vehicle, man, because I'm telling you two things, three things I try to stay away from. I try to stay from medical school. I try to stay away from uh, rocket science. And the last thing is law school, which I did say earlier that you have your Juris Doctor, which means that you went to law school and you excel. And it's great that you do practice law. And I look at, um, you know, things on, on, on the television that entertain me, things like how to get away with murder and law and order. And I know that that's Hollywood, but you know, those people that step in outside that courtroom, they have that, 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 that aura, that persona that they know what they're talking about, that they know what they're doing. They know how to work through the law and understand how it can work for you or work against the person that you're going through, uh, going against. Um, with that being said, um, you know, those, those shows like try to give some type of real life substance to like the law. Um, and so I want to talk about real life substance. How do you use real life situations and lessons to build your knowledge base? Um, for me, it's, uh, I think that especially being from where I'm from, I had to learn a little bit more about the Southern culture. Uh, most of my clients are either from Florida. I've, I've dealt with people from Alabama. If I don't understand and can't communicate with them on an efficient and personable level, then you're not very good at your job. Your, your job is supposed to advocate for what they want. And if you can't, if you don't understand what they, what they, what they're going through, maybe, you know, maybe what, maybe they have an issue with the school system. Maybe they have an issue with the, with the people their front where the, where they live around, who knows? I mean, there's a, there's a variety of different, um, a myriad of different issues that could come up, but you have to be able to understand other people. And if you don't, if you don't humble yourself and listen, and take notes <laughs> and try to learn about as much things as you possibly can. You never know. I, I pride myself on the ability to be in a lot of different situations and I usually can fit in like a chameleon. That's not by accident. It's from reading. It's from listening. It's from traveling. It's from being able to understand that what's comfortable to me and what I've always known is not necessarily what, where it is everybody else, everywhere else. And you have to be able to understand that. And the I feel like the best lawyers, the best communicators, you can put them in, in a room and anywhere in the country and they do a great job of communicating. I love that you bring in communication <laughs> because it's something that I value heavily. But um, a lot of times when I hear the, the word power, you know, everybody always has such a negative connotation to it. They think it's something that people use to oppress other people. And, and quite honestly, I just think it's because people don't know how to use their power in the right way. And I think that if this power is channeled the right way, it can make a great impact. So my question is, how can you take the power of knowledge and use it to empower those around you? Oh, good question. That is a great question. Um, the best way you can do that is understanding who you're with, understanding your surroundings. Uh, one book I really like is called The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. In that book, they go through all kinds of teachings. I mean, we're talking, some of it's channeled from the Art of War by Sun Tzu. And, and while that sounds like it's a, like an attacking type of book, it's really not. It's, a, it's about a, uh, an old general from like ancient China. And um, he was able to basically know his surroundings, know how to get the best out of everybody that you're around. So if you, if you can use that, there's so many different ways to cultivate it. You don't necessarily, just because you, Yes, there are powerful people that use their politicians to be one great example of using your influence and power on people to kind of get what you want and not necessarily you can there's but there's plenty of people, there's plenty of social workers who are tremendously powerful uh, in the communities that they, they they serve. And if you have your if you use your power and your influence for the right way, which hopefully I can do someday, hopefully I can help a kid that's coming behind me, maybe like, you know, five, ten years from now. And he's looking to he's looking to get shake hands and things of that nature. That's how you can use your power for the better to like always be a good example for people coming behind you. That's what's important to me. Man, you I wouldn't be here if people didn't do that. 
Oh yeah, man. And you were you brought up Richard Sherman earlier, man. I'm gonna touch back on that a little bit. I always love all of his media coverage when he speaks yes. in front of the mic. Because when you look at him, you think of six three, long cornerback, long hair. You know, you think you you just think whatever that personification is. But every time he speaks, he's like, you know, I'm a six three professional athlete, man, college educated, and he's so articulate when he speaks. And, you know, it's kind of cool when you say, you know, what you surround yourself by. Um, I also like that you jumped into a little bit of detail about the uh, 48 powers, uh, 48 hours of power and then the art of war. Um, are there any other things that you like leverage, like watch, listen to, read, um, to build up your knowledge base? Oh my lord! <laughs> I listen to a tremendous amount of podcasts. I'm I um I'm not a real big um cable news watcher. I do um I listen to a lot of podcasts with that. That's where I get my news from. NPR is a good one. There's a lot of uh, I'm a very 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 big fan and follower of Malcolm Gladwell. Who went? He go. I think he, I believe he went to Trinity College, which is located in Canada. It's basically like their Harvard. He's basically like one of the best social scientists in the world. Um, he studies what makes people that are very, uh, very, very successful people tick. Uh, a lot of similarities. People, it's really not like necessarily God-given talent as much as it is you're willing to work really, really hard. Uh, and he, you know, he he talks about great scientists like an Elon Musk, and he compares mm. him to a person like a LeBron James. Mm. That 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 type of analogy or metaphor is not normally what you would think of. I mean, he, I, I highly recommend that um, he, he'll, he'll, he'll go through revisionist history. And uh, one, one episode I listened to recently, I'll talk about it briefly, was he talks about Brian Williams when he, Brian Williams lost his job. He was a famous, famous news anchor who got it back. He worked for NBC. Mm. He took he went on a bunch of fire several years ago because he was actually recalling a time where he went to Afghanistan and he was in a helicopter and he had said, and over over multiple interviews, his story kept changing and changing and changing. Mm. And you would think, well, that person's a liar. That's, that's being lazy. That's not really looking into the whole issue of that. What he was trying to say was people over time, maybe their perception of something, while it starts off genuine, it tends to morph because they, everybody's human and they make mistakes over time. Mm. And that is, it's really, yeah, that's just an example of Malcolm Gladwell's work. Mm. I need it's kind to, of like I need, a sport scientist as well. I need to tune into that because I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> I, think I really, I really like that, you know. And yeah. Coach B and I always leverage uh, being not being gatekeepers of information, but sharing our knowledge and and making sure that people know that they can come to us, can always ask questions and find answers. And when I was younger, you know, I often found myself speaking so much because my desire to use my knowledge was so great and because I spoke so much, I started to see as I got older that um, my knowledge was now hurting those around me in a way. Um, how do you discern when to sit and listen and then when to share what you believe might be helpful? That is a skill that I feel like I'm still working on. Um, <laughs> I tend to talk, talk quite a bit at times. Um, I feel like I've gotten better at it. I feel like everybody, you know, we all have things we have to work on. Uh, but as far as listening, it's, it's you know, what, what, my, my, what I think I pride myself on is when I don't know someone really well, I tend to get to know them really quickly. Um, the only way that you can do that is if you do listen. You have to, first of all, you have to be able to will, be willing to open yourself up as well. The dialogue has to go both ways, um, but it's important to learn how to listen to people. You have that's probably the most important, you know, if you can learn a skill at all in a professional setting, if you can listen and not talk too much and not over dominate conversations, you will go very, very far in this world. Many times you never know what another person is going through. You never know what kind of day they had, what kind of what maybe they have something going on at home you don't know about. If you listen to that person, you never know. You can make a friend for life. You can make a, you know, a contact that you would never know. It's, I can't tell you how many times where I did something for somebody and I'm not even thinking anything of it. And we're just like, hey, man, when you, when you took me out to lunch that day, I really needed that. And all I was doing was trying to eat some tacos and listen, chill. Maybe I was tired of talking. You never know. But as long as you're genuine about it and your heart's in the right place, 
when you listen and that other person sees that and you're being genuine, it'll take you very, very far. Man, listening has definitely been something I've been trying to work on too, because I tend to be, you know, a big talker as well. And um, especially going through what we've been going through in our country with social justice and um, social injustices and, you know, taking time to just take a step back and look at all perspectives and all lenses and, you know, really leverage, uh, you know, getting to know people. I think it's really opened up some doors, but it's also closed some doors too, because, you know, um, those are also tough conversations. But when it comes to uh, strict guidelines, you know, um, Caitlin always leverages communication. Um, and she always talks about listening, like being a good listener and being a good communicator. Um, what other rules do you follow when it comes to discernment of your information? Mm. I never go into conversations and speak too much without doing a tremendous amount of research on the topic. Um, that is one thing I cannot stand. If I'm having a conversation with someone and I know a little bit about the topic and I can tell that that person does not know very much about the topic, you automatically lose, lose that air. Every time you walk in a room, you can always make that first impression if it's a new person. When you, when you do that, you have to be genuine about it. Be honest about what you're talking about. If you don't know, you, have, you, have, you can't be afraid to say, I don't know. That's one thing. You know, I think that that's going back to your knowledge base. Building it over time is great, but you know, you know, but also you can learn quite a bit from other people. Um, by all kinds of different topics, but you have to learn how to listen, but you have to be genuine about what you know. And that can go being well read. I mean, go back to a question you just asked me. And like I said, I like to listen to NPR. I cannot tell you how much I learn um, on about different political issues around the country, the way it sits certain places. I mean, I'm, I'm come from a liberal area of the country. When I listen to this one podcast called Left, Right and Center, they do a very, very good job of looking at the very conservative parts of America and they have a very, very art, usually articulate lawyer or, mm -hmm. or whatever strategist that is able to break that down. Mm -hmm. So that's my, that's the way I look at that. That's really good. I'm learning a whole lot from you tonight. I guess I need to start listening <laughs> to some more podcasts. <laughs> Definitely need to start listening to some more podcasts, but you know, one thing when we talk about knowledge, uh, I've always heard growing up that you're either book smart or you're street smart. You know, few are both book smart and street smart. But I think nowadays there's so we tend to feed kids information so much, especially with them having the internet at their hands, social media. Like now, the kids that I work with at Holy Innocence, I have I talked to a seventh grader today that has invested in stocks. I'm like, dude, you're only in seventh grade, man. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's sitting there talking to me about stocks. And so I just think so many kids are so book smart now, but they're not being taught the street smart and how to go out in the world. But how can we do a better job of educating our kids on life so they are more prepared when it's time for them to step into the real world? Oh, wow. That's uh, I mean, it's hard for me to say because... When I was a kid, it was my like my mom would say if I was playing video games too much or I was on the computer too much, she's tell me to go outside and play. That's easier said than done. Um, but I think that it's it's not necessarily that they it's social media is necessarily as bad. Well, I guess it is bad, but you know you can use your computer as as such a great tool as well. And but as, the main thing is you got you have to have a balance. Um, for me, I, I like to have a balance, and the coolest. Coolest thing that Apple iPhones did was it kind of was a jarring thing to my my <laughs> my system a little bit when it occurred. But when I was able to see how much I actually look at my my phone screen, mm. and I, I I just can't imagine how much kids do. I guarantee it's significantly more than you know the average thirty you know thirty two year old does. But the the key thing I would always stress is do something do something great with the kids in your life. Do something awesome to. Let's, let's go out, go outside, take them to a park, take them to a museum. I was when I was a kid, I loved going to museums. Mm -hmm. But have it striking that balance, because I'm telling you, if you're constantly looking at a screen all the time, you're, you're going to miss out on so much. And you have to learn how to communicate that, listen to what they what they're into, and then maybe try to see if you can make take them to that in person. I know it's a little bit difficult now with the pandemic going on, but mm -hmm. eventually, well, things will get back to normalization. And I think if you can learn how to strike a balance, you can do it in a unique way. I think you can go a long way, especially if you're trying to teach you. 
Yeah, to be honest with you, man, when I looked at the iPhone usage thing, I was actually embarrassed. <laughs> but, like, yeah. I couldn't even believe it. And at the time, um, this is pre-COVID, so I was actually sitting in an office. And you think, okay, I'm sitting in an office, I'm doing my job right, but how much am I checking that phone, right? How much am I like, yeah. 10 minutes on my computer doing what I'm supposed to do, 10 minutes on my phone, it was like back, forth, back, forth. And then um, I lived in Austin, Texas by myself for 18 months, so... Um, you know, doing the same thing, like how much of it was I spending on my phone. Um, but I do like the fact that you said that it could be a tool, right? It could be a tool. We know that information age, that things are getting to you at warp speed. And I always tell people all the time, I'm like, dude, there's so many kids that, you know, as I was uh, getting to the tail end of my classroom teaching, and now I'm doing it for a, um, a education, uh, corporate education firm, you're like, dang, these kids know so much so fast and it's mm. hard to keep up. Um, do you think there is a universal message that each person should live by when it comes to um, building up your knowledge? And if so, what would that be? Hmm. Baby steps. I would say, you know, it took me a long time to build a base of knowledge where I feel like I can sit in a room with all kinds of different people just because you don't know certain information right away, that doesn't mean that you won't learn it. And just because you, and some, some, maybe, maybe somebody I, I listens to this podcast or watches it on YouTube and they say, you know, I don't like this Robert Green guy, but maybe you like Michael Lewis. Maybe you like, maybe you like other interpretations of the 48 Laws of Power, which there are some. I mean, um, it's just, I feel like you just, you have to learn how to be adaptable is the best thing I would say. Because there's definitely certain books and classic books that I don't really, I'm not particularly fond of that have been recommending me over the years. But that doesn't mean that it was a bad suggestion. It's just maybe you have to do some more research and try to dig, do your own digging. I feel very, very rewarded when I, when I find I get like, sometimes I go on very deep Google dives or I'll do it on YouTube and I'll just watch documentaries for hours and I'll start learning about all kinds of stuff that I didn't know. And I'm 32. You always have to know that you're always going to learn. Don't be comfortable with growing your knowledge base. Always try to expand it. But, you know, do it at your own pace, especially, you know, now. Like, I probably read more books during the pandemic than I have probably since law school. <laughs> so you just always have to know that you're always growing. That's what I would say. Mm. And with, with always growing, what are – what are the benefits of being a curious learner? Well, um, like I, I've kind of touched on it again before, but it's, I just feel like it's, it can benefit you. Um, you know, you, you never know how you can click with a person sometimes, and maybe that person can help you with a job down the line, or maybe you can shake hands with the right person. It's happened to me. I know it can happen to other people. I know it's happened to Coach B over there. Um, shoot, I didn't know who you were, Miss Caitlin, you know, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I was able to, we were able to network with each other and, you know, now, now we're doing our second podcast with each other. With, with each other. So I will always say, keep an open mind, um, open mind about everything that you do and always, and always do it with honesty and integrity. And I think that will take you a very long way. I love that you say that it helps you learn how to shake hands because the ability for me to have that I've developed when it comes to asking questions has really helped me grow my network. And mm -hmm. like, I'm trying to get into the coaching space and like, I would never thought, but I know probably 10 division one coaches that I can call right now and get advice from. And it's all because I wasn't scared to ask questions and learn and grow. Absolutely. And I'm gonna throw this one out there cause this was actually a question that I actually kind of came up with while I was doing my day today, but it's kind of great how God gives you some things um, with knowledge and you out there searching and you're being a curious learner and you're looking for things and you're enhancing and growing and being adaptable and being open, there are a lot of things that feed you misinformation too. Um, I know that I was uh, looking at some kind of, um, uh, some type of um, situation today where, um, you know, we're in a, in a crazy battle for an election and uh, one senator was talking about um, how somebody said a blatant lie on Twitter about him and he felt it was disinformation or misinformation. But as he's reading the information, he only says half of the quote. And then the second part of the quote was, this is false, this is a lie, but I have more lies coming. But you felt so bad because you think to yourself, 
for somebody that's not going to research, somebody that's not going to put a bunch of screen time on their phone, they're not going to go back and say, oh, let me go and find what this quote was actually. You would really be stuck at that one moment like, this guy's being treated unfairly, right? But as you, as you do your research, as you read a little bit, you kind of realize, oh, man, the person actually said, this is a lie, but watch me do this to you because I'm just lying out of my face. With that being said, how do you, it, it, it's, it's really a discernment question. Um, what do you do when you, when you face misleading or, or, or uh, misinformation? Ooh, that is a great question because I mean, that's what half of three quarters of what you find on social media. Um, you have to, first of all, I mean, you have to be able to believe in your ability to do your own research. Um, what do they say? You believe in half of what you hear, none of what you see, or none of what well, I can't remember the exact quote. I'm sure I butchered that, but it's something along the lines of don't believe everything you hear. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never been like that, <laughs> even with people I like. But, you know, you have to be able to, that's another thing, that's what, being a curious learner. Don't always just stop at the first source you're reading, you know? If, if you start reading the same thing in three different reputable news sources and you can look it up and, and that's that's and it looks like a legit source and you can check that source and that source says the same thing, odds are that's accurate. That's an accurate, accurate statement. But if it, if it doesn't look, if it doesn't look right, doesn't smell right, it's probably not right. Right. And you don't want to be that person that's actually spreading that misinformation. You want to be the person that's correcting said it misinformation. Mm. You don't have to do it in a, in a rude way, right. you know? And if the person, like as Bobby has said, uh, coach B had said a little bit ago, you know, this election has been contentious for sure. Um, I've been having tremendous amounts of debates lately about the Supreme Court um, nomination, but they don't have to be, you know, they don't have to be contentious necessarily. I mean, I could just talk to you about what I know. If you don't want to listen to the expertise, that's fine. Maybe, maybe you have your own sources that you prefer to listen to. That's fine. It doesn't have, like I said, it doesn't have to be rude. It doesn't have to be malicious, but, um, you know, you have to be able to form your own opinions. That's what I, that's one thing I will say that's beautiful about smartphones and things of that nature. And uh, for me specifically, I love having my tablet. I have so many books on that thing. I don't go anywhere without that, um, especially when I travel. But I mean, you just have to, you just have to use your best judgment. Unfortunately, I can't tell you how many times when it's not about like knowledge per se, but it's about like football. I'll get tricked by a fake Adam Schefter or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think somebody's injured or something like that. I mean, right, right. sometimes that's kind of funny. But, you know, you just got to take it with a grain of salt sometimes what you hear. If it, all, odds are I feel like most people can discern what is true and what's not. Right. But that comes with experience, too. Right. And, and I'm glad that you said that. And I'm going to um, tackle this second part of Caitlin's question. I don't know if she's going to ask it, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it for her. Um, and I'm glad that you put 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 uh, that part out about you know you know dig your do your research be able to be confident in your own research and I really think a lot of people fail at that first source like hey that first source gave me this so this must be true um, and I always tell uh, you know I used to tell my students especially in history I said you you miss the point if you don't read to the period and what that means is I want you to continue to read and to continue to develop and to understand if you don't understand it use another source to leverage what you were reading. Um, and it almost kind of reminds me of that guy. The reason I asked that question is because the guy came on, on um, I think he was at a uh, uh, special Senate hearing today or something, in inquiry today, because he was like, I'm being treated unfairly because this is happening. But I'm like, you didn't read all the way to the end of the period. And you know, so just read all the way to the end. I tell people when I used to teach the 13th Amendment all the time, I said, there's no slavery in the United States. And everybody's like, oh, that's the end. I'm like, no, but you got to read the last sentence. The last sentence says, except for a punishment of a crime. You know what I mean? Then you realize that there is actually slavery still in America. So um, the idea is to read to the period and then also, um, you know, be, uh, be, be confident in what you, in what you learn. Um, the, la the last thing that um, I have, and this is actually not my question, I'm stealing it from Caitlin, but um, she doesn't mind, is how has becoming a lifelong learner helped you? Oh, man. 
Well, it's been extremely rewarding. I met great friends. That's probably the main thing um, for me. It's just I've been able to travel, meet awesome people, um, network, which I truly enjoy doing. I've been able to help people that I care about. Um, that's the main thing to me. That is, it also is extremely rewarding. Um, you know, when 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 you know when you look at yourself at the end of the day, and you can look at your grades, or you can look at your job, or you can look at your performance, or you can look at your friendships, and people can count on you, and you can count on them. You know, that all is all about like learning and growing and growing and learning. I'm I pride myself on being fundamentally. I talked to a friend of mine from from back home, and I hadn't talked to him on the phone probably in about eight years. And he's just like, you sound so different. I'm like, hopefully in a good way. And he's like, you do. You just sound like really different, like in a good, like, you know, he meant it in a good way, like as a compliment. And I think that's what you strive for. You want to, I want to be better today than I was yesterday. Mm. And, and, and like, I would like to be better tomorrow than I was today. So if you keep doing that, if you're never, I'm never satisfied with anything, even when things are going well, like that, that, that's part of growing and learning. Mm. Obviously, you'll have your setbacks. That's natural. You can't be discouraged, and that's part of learning as well. You gotta learn. You gotta learn to take the good with the bad. But I assure you, if you can't stay focusing on tasks, there'll be some tremendous more days of good than there are bad. Mm. Well, we appreciate that, Oliver, man. And you know, it, it's just been once again another tremendous conversation. Man, at the end of our podcast, we come to that huddle, man, and the huddle is where you get to have that call to action. The cool thing about it is you've done this before, so you know what it is. We're huddling yeah. up, we're calling to action, we're telling our um, listeners and our viewers, hey, this is what's up, this is what you want. we want to take you, give you from the podcast and want you to uh, uh, go from there. Caitlin, you'll start, we'll let Oliver go, and then I'll finish up. Go ahead, CB. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. And then when you say, I don't know, be a curious learner and learn something new about it. Be a curious learner. Go out there and vote, people, November 3rd. Don't just vote for the top of the ticket. Learn about the amendments. Know, know the people who are running for sheriff. Know the people who are running for the other offices around the – if you want to complain about – I don't want to hear people complain about what's going on for the next four years if you didn't vote. Learn. You still have time. We have about five days, I believe it is. Mm. That's, that's my takeaway. There you go. I like that. Uh, you sound like uh, old President Rock. He said, don't complain, <laughs> just vote. Don't complain, just vote. Um, yeah, mine is going to be, man, actually, man, knowledge is fun. Uh, knowledge is fun. It is a gift to use your brain. I like how CB told us earlier that she talks to a kid at the center in Pensacola, and he said, hey, what's two plus two? Can somebody take that away from you? And he's like, no, it's going to be four. Can't nobody take that away from me. They can take everything else from me, but they can't take what's inside my head. So that's cool. And I want people to know that's listening that satisfaction is the death of a man's desire. So Ooh. you have the ability to gain knowledge and you have an ability to thirst for knowledge. And if you're satisfied with just knowing the first, um, the first, um, um, dang, what am I trying to say? If you're if you're excited about or if you're uh, satisfied with just the first bit of research and you don't want to go to that next three or get to the end of the period, then you're really cutting yourself short. So don't be satisfied with your knowledge. Knowledge is fun. Remember, satisfaction is the death of a man's desire. Man, I'm so excited once again to have my guy, OC3. All right, my, yeah, one of my right. friends, man. It's been awesome, awesome time. We're going to finish up with our mottos and then we're going to be out of here. Oliver, you go ahead and start. I'll, I'll go next and then CB, you can finish up. Go ahead, Oliver. What's your motto? My motto tonight is short and sweet. Stay hungry, stay humble. Stay hungry, stay hum humble. I like that. Well, what I've been leveraging is, man, make sure that you have relationships over transactions and remember that Coach B loves you and let love be the frequency. And as you guys know, don't discount your value and let's get 1% better every day. Thank you, OC3. We'll talk to you later. Beautiful. Love it, guys. Thanks. Peace.